Bingo! Your mind rings from the instant realization that you have very dark uh, semi-lunar or arcing uh, segments of hyaline cartilage uh, overlying an area which looks softer than the outside area and also in the area which you could see remnants of an actual mucosa. So you already know that this was a, uh, a large bronchus. And here we are in focus. You can see better delineation of the chondrocytes and you can see the mucosa and you can see some submucosal glands and then you can see the looser connective tissue on the outside and if you wanted to look maybe we could find some lung uh, but let's not look at the boring area let's look at the exciting area let's look to see why this whole mucosal area looks like it's uh, inflamed and infiltrated by inflammatory cells well the reason why it looks like it's inflamed infected by inflammatory cells is because it is. This is a very whopping acute uh, bronchitis. I don't see too many remnants of uh, epithelial cells, which in the bronchus would be a pseudostratified ciliated columnar, but I do see some submucosal uh, mucus glands here uh, underneath this nice hyaline cartilage. The mucosa appears to be uh, destroyed and inflamed and replaced by uh, granular uh, necrotic material which has fibrin and which has acute inflammatory cells. This is acute bronchitis. Now I know you're thinking, hey, well, this is kind of a boring case of acute bronchitis. Why are you even showing it? Well, I'll tell you why I'm showing it because if you were really, really experienced and which even I'm not this experienced because you don't see this too much. And when somebody does find it, they usually present it at a big conference. But within this necrotic mucal debris, uh, perhaps here's an area of mucosa which isn't so necrotic. Maybe you can see some residual, nice, normal, pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium here. This is your normal bronchial mucosa. But if you look in the parts of the mucosa that's replaced by this crud, perhaps I could convince you, even though I will admit I would probably miss this nine times out of ten, that in some of these areas you could see tiny little almost uh, purplish structures surrounded by a little bit of a pinker material. And you could say, well, at this level that could be anything, that could just be junk. But look, at here's some here as well. And here's a few over here as well. Well, you're still not too excited. So let me show you what somebody was actually nice enough to spend a long time looking for in this case and found. And it's much more better example of what we already saw. Do you see these little guys here? They have a, almost like a, like they're almost like about the half a size of a red blood cell, like maybe five microns here and here and here and here and here. And actually all of these tiny little dots. This is cryptosporidium. And uh, at this power, you're probably not impressed, but uh, I can tell you it was. If you were to do a beautiful stain for cryptosporidium, you might see something like this. This is a modified Kenyan's acid fast stain. And here you could see the organisms much better. You could also see if this is 10 microns, like we thought, these are about half the size of that, or let's say 5 micron, almost the size of a uh, red blood cell. Cryptosporidium is a um, parasite. It's a protozoan. It's been present in drinking water, uh, even in drinking water that everybody drinks, and normally it doesn't hurt us. But if you are immunocompromised, like with AIDS, it could cause a uh, perhaps a severe acute infection, which usually resolves. But um, this is one of the fears of AIDS patients, is that they will be just drinking regular water and uh, they can wind up getting perhaps an acute respiratory or GI infection of cryptosporidium. Thank you very much.